Yo, wel yeah, welcome back. All right, hey, let's let's uh, let's start. Hey, and and just so you know, if you're coming in late, there are a lot of seats down front. Just a couple right in the front row, man. Two, yo, if you're coming in right now, yo, gentlemen over here, do two prime seats right here, man. <laughs> Except you got to sit next to this guy, but which I wouldn't want to do. All right. Hey, I'm, 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 re I'm looking forward to today's class. You'll probably hear that almost every day because it's true. Um, so I, I want to, once again, I want to remind you that we are in a, um, you know, in, in this space, it's, it's always a really dynamic experience. You know, for me, and, and I guess, and for you, I mean, for this class, in in the sense that you know each class is built on the previous class and then sometimes we just stop and go in a completely different direction which which you know will happen um which is also also really cool because you never know what completely different direction we're going to go in um hey by the way if you just came in there are a lot of seats right in the front row man i want i want i'd like to see these filled so uh so um, we're going to, I want to look at this question and, you know, what, what should, when should we call something racism, right? So the last class was, when do we need to think about seeing color? This is when do we need, should we call something racism? You should know that um, I rarely uh, start out this a semester talking about racism, discrimination, and so on. And hey, here, yo, right here, right there. And just because, I don't know, it seems like it's a really hot topic. Uh, and I, yo, gentlemen, right down the front there and over here, man. Just you got to come. Listen, if you come in late, you have to come down to the front and look up and see all, all the empty seats. Bro, you can go sit right over there, man. And. You can sit there, bro. You can sit right there. You can sit right there, dude. Oh, yeah, you can sit there, man. Follow him. Yeah, sit in the black chairs, man. So we're just, we're still in the process of getting you all organized in here. But, so we don't have to do this constantly. Yo, hang on. You have to, you, you have to just walk in the side aisles, come down to the front. And you can easily see where all the open seats are, okay? It's very simple. But it means you, you're, you're, and if you do that, then I'm not going to say anything. And therefore, nobody will ever know. But if, you, if you're wander, the kind of looking like you're lost and you don't know what to do, then I'm going to say something and then everyone's going to look at you. So if you just do what, like these two folks, what she's doing, it's all good. Okay, so that's how we're going to roll in here. All right, so... Uh, Can I, hey, just re really, f you know what, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pass over the attendance one. I'm going to introduce them later, okay? Uh, but I want you to say something. Leah, can you step up here really fast? This is Leah. Hi, I'm Leah. That, Leah? Mm -hmm. You say Leah? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm calling you Leah. Yeah, I've Wait, always wanted here. to tell you. First, I can't, I can't, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I can't pronounce either of her names. That's her English name, mm-hmm. but your co- Korean, hang on, hang on. I'm going to go for it again. Okay. Go, go ahead. Tell them your Korean name. Um, my Korean name is Hyun Seo Choi. Hyun Seo Choi. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> uh, go ahead, try it again. Hyun, Hyun no, no, I don't mean you try it again. Let me try oh, it again. Okay. You know how to pronounce your yeah. name. No, say it again. Hyun Seo Choi. Hyun Hyun. Hyun? Hyun. 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 Dude. Okay, hang on. <laughs> We're just going to say Leah for a moment. Here, I want to tell you a story. So Leah was in Social 19. Um, during, the pan- during the pandemic or before the, before before the, pan- the pandemic? Right before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And um, then went back to Korea during the pa- You went back to Korea, right? During yeah, the pandemic. Right. And then you reached out to me at some mm-hmm. point asking just to talk about yeah. some things. So then she... Uh, we just talked. She tra- you translated our mm-hmm. book. Right. And um, then when I went to Korea in May, mm-hmm. I said, hey, Leah. Mm-hmm. I probably called you Leah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I You're said, good. hey, I'm coming to Seoul. Can we meet? Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and in particular, she, we met on my very first morning. Mm-hmm. Right. I said, meet me in my hotel mm-hmm. <laughs> because I, need, I needed... I, okay, hang on. No, no, hang on. No, come on. No. <laughs> See that? That's what happens. No. You, look at you. You people. Come on. So, because I needed, mm-hmm. be, because I needed some tutoring to learn mm-hmm. about what you ten, you taught me like 10 phrases. Yeah. How was I? Um, um, I like, mm-hmm. how did I do? Yeah, right? you're good. Mm-hmm. I'm good on that one. Yeah. That's the only one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how, can you tell how much of a failure I was? Yeah. So, like, it's just hard to pronounce, like, O sound or, like, S or L. <laughs> so. Which is basically every important sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we would, she would, we were sitting there face to face, and mm-hmm. she would say something. Mm-hmm. And I would say it back to her, and I know mm-hmm. it's correct. I got this. And mm-hmm. she'd be like, no, man. <laughs> and I ne- never once did you mm-hmm. say I, I got something mm-hmm. right. But we were close. Yeah. And then we went downstairs, and we had a meal with some folks that in, invited mm-hmm. me to a, a lunch. Right. And Leah went. To, so we went together. She mm-hmm. went as my guest. I went as their mm-hmm. guest. Uh, and I, subs- I forgot every single thing you taught me at yeah. that meal. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was saying goodbye for hello and hello for goodbye and so on. But anyway, mm-hmm. you are now here as mm-hmm. the podium person keeping me in line. Yep. So here's what we need. We need a Korean, mm-hmm. preferably a woman, mm-hmm. who can volunteer today. Mm-hmm. Can you in Korean say, hey, could, you, could somebody please volunteer today so I don't have to? <laughs> in Korean. Say it in Korean. Mm. So they'll, they'll really listen to you because they're not mm-hmm. going to listen to me. Okay. 한국인 계신가요? 한국 여성분 계시면 오늘 해주세요. Yeah. So can think about it. Mm-hmm. How many? We have some Korean. It could be any, could be a Korean man, but no, it would really, really be nice mm-hmm. if it was a woman. Is there? Say it again. Say, come on, man. <laughs> Throw a swear word in there. Like, get pissed. <laughs> 저 도와주실 한국 여자분 없으실까요? 한국 여자분. We're talking about skin today. Mm-hmm. 오늘 We're talking about K-beauty. K-beauty에 대해 이야기하신다고 하는데 한국 여자분이 아예 안 계세요? Nobody? Oh, come on. Seriously? Oh, this is lame. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> they left you out the dry. Okay, okay. but it's not right now. Okay. Thanks, man. All right. Leah, everybody. Right. All right. So, um, so here's the thing. Um, I was thinking about last class and, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of, you know, just what we were talking about. Um, and again, you know, it's this idea that, you know, you, when you, when you take a class, you know, say on like, like social 119, um, you know, there's always, we, we live on thin ice in the world of race relations and cultural and ethnic relations. And, 
you know, we've kind of created this world based on a lot of thin ice. So, there, you know, we, we, we create a world where we're afraid of, you know, saying something wrong or doing the wrong thing. And then when, we, when that happens, then we get in trouble. And, uh, and so you can imagine when you come into a class like this, where we're talking and we're especially having open conversations that, you know, there's going to be a lot of trepidation uh, about um, engaging in these kinds of, these kinds of issues. Uh, and um, like worthless at this stuff. We're, okay. Um, you can imagine there's a lot of trepidation. Uh, and you, you can imagine to a, to a degree like how I feel, you know, because it, 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 at every moment I'm, I'm really walk, I'm walking on thin ice because, you know, we're talking about some things that most people don't like to talk about. In fact, the, the most common uh, thing that people say to refrain or statement that people say to me um, when it when it comes to uh, this class or this work or what we do the most common thing is um, man it's I can't I just can't even imagine talking about these things uh, in front of so many people because it's just so sensitive you know we're, we're living in a really really sensitive time and uh, so uh, here are a couple of things that I, I want to and so I don't know if it's because I'm bold or because if I'm, I'm ignorant, but I like to think it's because I'm a, I have the mind of a, of a three-year-old and I'm just really curious about stuff. And I like to ask a lot of questions, but there are a couple of things that I remember constantly. And one is that uh, my beliefs and opinions aren't true. And they're just beliefs and opinions and I'm basing them on something but they are in fact to a degree my beliefs and opinions and so uh, that's really important and it's important for I want to reiterate to you all that you think about that and you remember that all the time so you know we we were you know you all are are coming to a time in life when you're starting to really form or form or transform or change your these your beliefs and opinions and that's obviously what schooling is all about and you know my job is to help make that happen just to just keep jarring saying things um different things all sorts of things um so the first thing is remember that your beliefs and opinions aren't true it doesn't matter where they're from or where you got them or whatever you think and by that i mean uh there's always somebody else thinking something different and you can always find somebody I don't care what the perspective is, but if you find the right person, you can find someone who can passionately and intellectually with, with depth and curiosity and deep understanding who, make, who can make an argument for a perspective that's very different from the one that you have or the one that I have. Now, I've learned that over time in my life uh, because I encounter so many really smart people i have had the opportunity to encounter so many really smart people who thought things very different than, than or saw the world very differently than how i saw it and uh you know this is um it's very humbling but it's also really empowering because what i've learned over time is i don't have to try to have uh have the right or correct or whatever beliefs and opinions because i know that there's all they're always just at, at some level uh they, they're always subject to possible change. The other thing that you need to remember or think about is that no matter what is said in here that you agree with, there are other people in the room who disagree with that. And if, regardless of what is said in here that you disagree with, there are always other people in this room who agree with it. So it's this, that these two things are always in play. And for me, what, bro, can you 
just stand up really fast. I just want to just like, just look at, just turn around, look at all, look at, all. so I just want you to look at every person has a different set of beliefs, right? Yeah. And so imagine being me and I have to sit, talk about these really contentious topics and, and I, I'm looking at these two guys here and I have a certain way of talking about the topics, but I know that these three people here disagree with what they're thinking or what I'm saying to them. And I, these people over here are confused. There's a couple, some people up there that think I'm a complete idiot. There are other people over here that think, oh, you should talk further about this because this is so important. And, and somebody over here who's saying, you should never talk about that. And somebody over here saying, you never talk about the things that are the most important things to talk about and just on and on and on, right? So just looking, it's, you know, just look, look, looking at it from that angle, it's, hang on. That, that would be pretty daunting, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know how you do it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it's mental illness. But the biggest thing is, <laughs> the biggest thing for you, though, is this how you do it. What I want you to see is how you do it. So as you're sitting here, and you're agreeing with something that I say or somebody else says, I want at every moment to you, you to remember there are p other people who disagree with that. Yeah. And that when, you, when I say something or someone says something that's so reasonable and you think, oh, that's so smart and so reasonable, always remember there are really smart people in here who disagree with it. And if I gave them a mic and brought them to the front, they could lay out a reason for that. And that's your job in this classroom. Yeah, I also think that we're all learning. We're all in between 18 to 22 years old. It's only not even a quarter way through your life. I think every every single day you learn. Yeah, yeah. And when you get to be to get to my age, it's even it's more frightening because you you learn how much you don't know. Every day I wake up, and because I've gotten really good at learning things, which means that my my scope of learning expands more. And then I see more and more of what I don't know. And I have less time. You know, I used to have the idea that when I was your age, I used to have the idea that, uh, oh, I'll have enough time in my life that I'll be able to figure it out. And now at my age, oh my, I, I, it's, that's never going to happen, man. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's your job, man. Always, always remember when you agree with something, think about the people who disagree with it. When you disagree with something, Think about how happy people in the room are that I or somebody else is saying that thing that you disagree with and be happy for them that, they, that they're happy that they get to agree. Will do. Dude, dude, what's your name? Owen. Owen. Dude. Thanks, Mom. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think I just want to, I just wanted to say that because I think it's really it, particularly valuable. Hey, um, can we, you want, let's, oh, uh, we're going to do the, uh, the attendance quiz. So can you pop, pull, pull out your phones? And I, Joy, I'm going to talk to the stream. Go to the next slide, Leah. Yeah, there we go. This, this goes right in there. The side, put one of the side cameras on. No, don't put me on the stream. Okay. On the overhead. Don't put me on the overhead. Put one of the side cameras. All right, listen. Hey, um, we are...
Can you guys? Can, can you guys hear me? Can, can you guys hear me? Yeah. On the screen? I don't think we're gonna hear you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright, listen. Wow, we're just working. We're only on day four. We got other systems in place. You gotta stop cutting my microphone off. You gotta stop cutting my microphone off. Okay. No, this one, the red one? The red one's leave that on. The red one's leave that on. Yeah, leave that on. Hey, listen. Yeah. We are uh, doing a trip. Just do some of these things, though, while people are getting in the end of the summer. I think you'll enjoy it. This is going to be interesting. Huh? Okay. Did you want to try it? Huh? We first plugged it in this, and then we plugged plug it into in. the first one. We did we plug did it in the first one, but it wasn't working. Okay, hang on. Try it now. Hey, Col uh, Coleman. Where's Coleman? Do you're on. All right, y'all. You can, yes, yeah, sit up here. Next slide. Is this on? Yep, you're on, man. Hey, all right, class. Uh, here we go. Just, just so you, just so you're aware, we're, you know, we're, it's like you have to get your procedures down and so on. So first couple of days, we're playing. It's fun. It's really a lot of fun. Coleman, well, tell us about yourself. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Coleman. I'm a sophomore studying aerospace engineering and physics. Oh, uh, yeah. And I, I guess I thought it would be fun to volunteer today for this. Good. Aerospace. Air, wait, aerospace engineering and physics. That's correct. Yes. What do you want to do? Uh, ideally, I would like to work in some research um, position, maybe at, at NASA or um, something like that. Something like that, yeah. All right, man. Hey, so take a look at this question that I, I put up here. This is about last class. You were here last class? Yes. All right. How, how would you answer that question? You know, go, go back to last class. What would you, what would you say? Uh, I, I mean, I, w I think it was an uh, important conversation. I, it's kind of hard for me to judge how positively it contributed to well, racial conversations, I guess. Okay, well, how about just think of the conversations that you have. Like, so don't think of like the larger world, but think, just think of like kind of people of your generation and your time. Like, what, what do you think? Don't, don't get too... You don't have to get too aerospace analytical. Like, don't take it too deeply, just like in a general sense. Although I appreciate that you're attempting to do that. I, I mean, it, it's, it's, I think it's an important conversation. Um, and what, what makes it important? That it's representative of major issues that exist in, in our society and that people are very animated by and will have negative effects on a lot of people. Um, in, mm -hmm. in this country and mm -hmm. I don't think that we can get really get past that without having difficult conversations uh-huh what would you uh, what do you mean by animated I mean th there's tons of, of racial strife in this country unfortunately uh -huh. because of of history um, and I, I we see that mm -hmm. in many different areas of our society and I mean just in, in ways we talked about in class, uh, you know, white centering in, in uh, like medicine, mm -hmm. for one. So if you were, so when I left the classroom the other day, uh, I had this idea that, huh, if I was a dermatologist, what would I think about what the, the you know, this knucklehead was talking, you know, this guy was talking about, right? Did, do you have any thoughts on that? If you were a, and an, an medical doctor, dermatologist in particular? 
how, wait, I'm sorry. How, like, do you mean? how would you feel about what I was saying in some ways about the profession? I mean, I assume that's, a- that's accurate. It sounds like it, it was. Uh-huh. You assume that. Sure, yeah. Okay. I would tell you to be very careful about that, right? Okay. Well, granted. Why, why do you think I would tell you to be careful about that? Because you may not necessarily have all the information. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I want you to think about how complicated physics is and aerosp- sure. yep. aerospace engineering. The, the world of human beings. We talk about your, your field of study as the hard sciences. Yes. And mine as the soft sciences. Sure. Mine are the hard science, the difficult sciences. Agreed. <laughs> no, and I, and I, no, I only say that because, because we're, we're, because I'm, we're, ta- I'm talking about human beings and human beings, we're so eclectic and we're so complicated and we're so contradictory and we're so, so many things, myself included. Talk about contradictory. My, my wife and I are married because of how much I contradicted myself. I mean, that's how we first came together but it's like so i'm trying to say things that are meaningful about you about people that are so incredibly complicated so incredibly difficult and like i'm gonna miss it most of the time sure i think that's probably true of a lot of people yeah well yeah i think so yeah well here's the other side though right Everybody in your field, nobody weighs in on stuff that, I don't know, like the quas- qua- qua- quasar, what is it, like quasars or something? What do you, give me something in... Er, in uh, supernovae, I don't know. Yeah, supernovae, right? Exoplanets. Like, sure. Like, let's yeah. talk exoplanets. Nobody, nobody's nobody's going to weigh in on what makes an exoplanet, right? What they're made of or like how they formed or... Okay. Because sure. n- no one knows. I mean, if, if he starts asking you about, ask me some question about, I don't know, some complicated physics question. Uh, I guess explain, t- 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 tell me a little bit about how f- Einstein's field equations are derived. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got that, man. Yeah, yeah. I go get my phone. I start exactly yes. stuff. I, I know nothing. But if I say to you, like, hey, can you uh, just walk us through the, the stages and the causes of homelessness? I mean, I, I have opinions on that. I don't, I wouldn't presume to say that I know better than, than experts in that field, but I certainly have opinions on that. Dude, you have opinions. I don't even have an opinion about Einstein, right? I don't have opinions about quarks. I don't have opinions about, um, you, you know, I, it, there's nothing, almost nothing in physics I, I have an opinion about, or aerospace engineering. I don't even know what aerospace, I mean, I know what it is, right? How do you get a rocket up in the air, like whatever. Yep. I have a, that's right. I mean, that's, that's the, how do you keep it up in the air? How do you bring it back down? That's actually the thing. Getting it up is probably easy, getting it back down. But I don't, I don't, I have zero opinions about that. But, you know, you just said, yeah, I don't really know about homelessness, but I have opinions, which is great. This is good, right? This is nice. But that means that everybody, everybody in here has an opinion about everything that we're talking about in here, which makes it even doubly complicated because you, because we, we all, we think we know something. And, but when you really dig into the, the issues, we really, like for me, I'm at the age now where I'm realizing I don't know anything about anything that I'm teaching about. And I've been teaching for 38 years, and I feel like I don't know anything. It's like, at best, I have opinions. And I think, oh, God. Whereas many of your professors, there are some things which are just kind of random. And the higher you go in physics, the more extraordinarily opinionated it is, actually. True. Right? Yeah, which makes it really cool. But, but at least in your field, you don't have people kind of thinking that they know. And then disagreeing. Well, you have the flat earthers, right? Yeah. Well, and th- th- they're growing. Dude, what do you make of that, man? I think we are at... Okay, well, just again, this is just my opinion. Go ahead. <laughs> but I think that we are in a, a place in our society where a lot of people are doubting the credibility of institutions. Yeah. 
and that manifests itself in a lot of ways, yeah, like yeah. flat earthers. Um, I mean, they're very like a very extreme example, but you know, you see it in like anti-vax people yeah. and all kinds of groups like that. Yeah. Flat Earth is though kind of simple. Anti-vax, I could at least imagine coming up with a reason to be anti-vax. Flat Earth, I, I know. But so now imagine uh, we're in this position where it's really awesome to doubt. But imagine now we're doubting all the things, the kinds of stuff that we're talking about in a class like this. And, and I know that. And the best I can possibly do is have the kinds of conversations that we've already had in here and that we will continue to have because I can't download information into your brain and have you, uh, you know, walk out away with it. At best, I can just stimulate new variables and new ideas. Sure, and, exactly, yep. Yep, and then have you go do it on your own. And, and, you, and the only thing, you have, to, you have to trust in me that I'm not thinking I have the answers, but you have to trust in me that I have a pretty good idea how to jar the answers in, out of you, you know, how to, how to shake your brain up and get you to think, think some things that you didn't think about, you know, an hour before class or whatever. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, and trust that I'm not trying to get you to think a certain way. Okay, sure. And what was, I said with Owen, that like you have all these people. So let me ask a question. Is there anybody in here who's a child of a dermatologist? Or has someone in your family who you're close to who's a dermatologist? How about, how about just a medical doctor? Bro, did you, you have a medical doctor? Who's, who is? Um, both, my both your parents? Do you have any thoughts about last class? Did, um, not much. Yeah, you didn't have much? Weren't you thinking like, because I could talk about your parents' fields and be like, did, did it lead you to think about though your parents and like, huh? Or, yeah, or like, I know, like, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, ye Yellow, can you just like get, I'm not gonna, I won't bring you up. Just can you get him on? Bro. Um, I know like I've talked to them already about a lot of that stuff. Um, it's like, I think we actually had a conversation about dermatology like a year ago or something, but yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So, did, but did you like, I had the idea that, well, if I was a dermatologist, I might think, you know, this guy's kind of throwing shade on our, on our, on our whole field and who am I who am I who am I man you know because I know I I know me that <laughs> I know me that my my field is complicated right and I know dermatology what, what kind of doctors are your parents uh my mom does family medicine my dad's pediatrician okay yeah. so pediatrician by the way is the whitest field in medicine mm. dermatology <laughs> is the second whitest so uh, which is kind of interesting, but I would think, you know, medicine is kind of like sociology. There's so much to know. I can't even imagine being your mom, mm -hmm. you know, general medicine, like family. You got to know everything. Like yeah. there's, there's just too much to know. So I would feel like if I were a, a dermatologist or a medical doctor watching that class, I would feel some kind of way about what I was hearing. And, and I thought afterwards, like, oh, okay, hang on, this is not, this is probably not a good thing, you know. Um, hmm. Yeah, thanks, bro. Uh, all right, so, uh, and, and if we go, Leah, can you go to the next slide really fast? Just to, to understand this causality thing, you know, what I was really trying to say, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk about causality for the whole semester. It's like you have patients and practitioners and the system and what what we tend what we're going to tend to do is we're going to we're kind of kind of land on one and to and often we'll just stay there like blame it on the patients or we're going to blame it on the practitioners for not doing their job well right or we're going to blame it on the, the racist system and we're just going to stay there but in fact you know it's a complex mix of all the three things i mean it's just like what you know and looking at the complexities once you bring multiple variables into play in physics no I, I agree i feel like a lot of people tend to like to blame one singular thing for a particular issue when it's usually a mix of many many causes yeah so 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 many things man so many things well i know that we're continuing to talk about this just because i i want to just keep reminding you all as we like move on to these conversations dude okay awesome man thanks appreciate it Coleman. Uh, um, 
Yeah, it's like it's like it's like the the tunnel vision thing that we want to focus. Okay, so uh, we, we're, you're going to need this. Is can you use that to change the side? Hey, can we have our next the next volunteers? I don't know where you're sitting. Everyone, bro. Yeah, yeah. They, whoever's volunteering today, you're on, dude. Bro, you're on. You're on. You're doing. You're on. Who else? And we have one other. There was one other person. Wasn't there one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you, you can use that. Just just push push that thing. Here, just go ahead and push it, and we'll move it forward. Move, point it toward that. Maybe that's not the right one. Hang on. No, hang on. There's another one under here. Can you look for the other one? In there. Yeah, there you go. That one. All right. Hey, you guys, you can uh, just, you can sit. You want to sit on the desk? It's fine. You can move, move, just move down a little bit. Leah's going to be up here. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about, wait, first off, can you introduce yourselves? Name and major. Name and. and, Um, uh, So my name is um, Pei Dong. It's like spelled as P-I-D-O-N-G. And I'm a sophomore uh, major in data science engineer. And where, where, are you, where are you, what's your ancestry? So my nationality is Chinese. I'm from, I'm, I was born and raised in China. Uh-huh. And yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, hey, um, my name is Priya Tam. Um, I'm a sophomore in mechanical engineering. Um, Priya Tam? Yeah. Priya Tam. E-R-A-Y-A-T-A-M. Priya Tam. Yeah. With a T. Mm-hmm. And Pei Dong. Yeah. All right. How do I do with that? Pay dong. Uh, decent. Better than yeah. Leah. I, I I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Man. All right. I'm Kavya. I'm a sophomore. I'm majoring in psychology and I'm Indian. Kavya. Mm-hmm. You're in the. Both of you are from India. Yeah. Born in India. Okay. Leah. Um, my name is Leah. I'll just take that. I'm an accounting major, and I'm a junior. Okay. And I'm from South Korea. <laughs> South Korea. So what I want to what I want to talk about is skin, pre- 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 this preference for lighter skin, okay, that we see in Korea, we see it in China, we see it in India, and I, I just want to I'd like to have a conversation about this a little bit, and maybe you could just sort of jump out and I want, so what what we want to do is. Um, when I, when I when I say, uh, you know, for example, can we can we go to the next slide? Oh wait, that's <laughs> that's me, Sam. Can you go to the next slide? All right, uh, I like white skin because that's the preference. That's what we're saying, and and I want to ask you all, like, bro, <laughs> dude, look at these look at these look at these four lovely people. Okay. And assume it, they're coming from countries that mostly would subscribe to. Would I? Would you say yeah? You would. Your if most people in your country would say yeah to that. Light skin. Yeah, more like a, there's like a beauty standard that people prefer like pale, virgin it's skin. It's not even white. It's pale. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Who's pale? In, who's who would identify as really pale in here? Dude, the redheaded guy, of course, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, stand up. Let everyone see what pale looks like. Turn around. Yeah. All right. Back. So like him. Yeah. And the red hair. Would you like the red hair too? Yeah. <laughs> In India. <laughs> like that guy. Dude, go go to go to go to China, India, Korea. You'd be rocking, man. You're like you're the star. Okay, bro. No, I want to ask you now. Uh, hey, y- y- yellow. Can you get? What do you, what do you hear? Just to actually, just stand up. No, just what do you, wait, you were up here already, right? Indeed. Yeah, you were. Hang on, I want, I want you, man. You haven't been up here. What do you hear when you hear that? I like white skin. You got, you got a lot of people. You got, you know, you, you, see, between India and China, you got almost 3 million people. Mm-hmm. In Korea, you got 55 million people. And that's a lot of people who are saying, I like white skin. Can you just, just stand up so we can all make, well, everyone, you can see. He, you can just, what's your name, bro? My name? Yeah. Quadi. Quadi? Yeah. Quadi does not have white skin. <laughs> How, what's, what do you think they mean when they say that? 
Um, I'm hopefully they're not assuming like white hold people. It, hold it close. Hello? Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping it's like a color thing, not like a people thing. You know what I mean? Like white skin, like lighter people. Not like white not people. Not like white people. Well, there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with white people. I'm just saying. Like, yeah, dude, thanks. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. What do you think it is, though? Like, what do you th look at them. What do you think it is? If you had to guess. Like, what do you mean? Like, you're saying, hopefully, they're not saying, I, I really only like white people. Because what does it say when they say, I like white people? What's it mean about you? That yeah, they also was, like you, or they yeah. probably don't like you? Yeah. Like, oh, no, like, they're excluding the people of color. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. So you, so you, you can feel some kind of way about that? Of course, As yeah. a black dude? Eh, it depends, though. A little bit. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you could. All right. You could also ignore it. Uh, all right, man. Can we talk about it a little bit? What, what are we... What do you mean? What's that mean? Well, In your culture, like, what, what's, it, what's it about white skin? Well, it's not like white skin, but it's like you want to be, like, fair. So you use, like, beauty products and stuff, and you don't really, like, tan, like how people here do, but... And what's the fair? Like, why? Like, what... I mean, what's... Be, I don't want to say why. Mm -hmm. um, what's behind that? Like, how do you see that? How do you think about it? Well, I don't really know. I don't know what it... Like, why it is, but people just want to be fair, like... They want to be fair. Mm-hmm. And, and just, like, what, a lighter shade of brown, not, uh -huh. like, dark brown. Is it... A, is... Um, Priya Tom, is it a conversation that you have a lot? Yeah. Like, yeah? Um, well, um, in my household, yes, because I would say, like, mostly, like, where I'm from, like, being fair is a commodity. Not it's a commodity? Yeah. Uh -huh. Not many people are, so um, I don't know, like, if, say, for example, like, um, you're trying to get your, like, kid to get married or something, you would prefer to look for someone who's like with a lighter complexion uh -huh. rather than a darker complexion. Not my words, but like, yeah, don't punch me outside, but. Um. Yeah, no, I do agree with that. Like, if like my friend is like talking about her boyfriend or something, she'll be like, yeah, he's cute. Like, he's really fair, like random. They would like, just throw that out there. Mm -hmm, yeah. Like as though it was like, you know, he's really tall or he has a nice car or whatever. So you'd be throwing the skin piece out. I mean, because, uh, another reason, because, I mean, I've heard this, but they, they want, like, f fairer children, that's why. Sometimes. They want fairer children. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to be fair. How would, wait, it's ca Kavya? Kavya. Yeah. Kavya. Um, c how would Kavya, could you guys just say, what, what do you think about each other, like, in terms of skin? I'd say we're not fair. Yeah. Well, not compared to that dude yeah, right there, no. man. Uh, he got it. Yeah. But, uh, Pei Dong, how about you? Can we in on that? I um, so the way I see it is um, I kind of I kind of take different perspective on this. I think it's just like basically a personal preferences, like in terms of like your appearances and stuff. Like some people like brown color of s like I know like I know white people would actually like go to tan themselves. Um, just to like look better so um, it's like personal preference like some people like probably like brown skin or darker skin some people like pale skins like different because from the place to where from like er, like basically we're like so in China it's like only same there's only one basically one race so there's no like there's no there's no like differentiation between like race relations like it's like just just the same race so like when you talk about like, skin color it's pretty much just like when you're talking about like appearances and stuff instead of a there's nothing related about race and like ethnicity and stuff so yeah. so okay so let me let's take a step back here really fast hey bro caleb can you just zoom in a little bit more zoom in more okay uh i think i or never mind yeah never mind bro can you uh say but you said earlier you know, what we're talking about with fairer skin. So there is, I, I hear you about the personal preference. Obviously, that's true. Everybody has a personal preference about different things. 
But in China, there is an overall preference, right? Like everybody in this classroom has different personal preferences about things, but at the same time, there's an overall preference for lighter or fairer skin. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you know of that? Like, where is that? Like, how do you, how like, do people talk about it? Like, do you mean like, why, the, like, what nah, are the reasons? You don't have to go why, like, how do no, people no, like, talk about okay. it? How do you talk about it with your friends and... How do other people talk about it? It's so it's actually interesting. Like I feel like people never talk about it because like it's just like it's automatically a default standard. So if you know what I mean, yeah. Like like you like we don't have to talk about like 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 if you go to like cosmetic product like you're trying to get a foundation, you go for like more pale instead of like uh -huh. brown and stuff. So like it's like default like like uh, conceptions. Mm -hmm. um that so like people rarely talk about it because like there's n probably no need to talk about it mm -hmm. and that's just the way i see it okay yeah, yeah. which is actually kind of interesting so this is like this is part of the ethnocentrism thing right what, it, what i'm hearing is that and then leah we're going to go to you what i'm hearing is that like here in the united states if you could uh i was about leah i was about to tell you to change the slide if you could uh when we see this, we, because we're a very racialized, colorized society, like we think about race all the time. But what you're saying is, and there are different ethnic, I mean, Han Chinese is the, the dominant ethnic group. I'm a, I'm a Mongolian, actually. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, my ethnicity is like Mongolian, Mongolian, but I'm Chinese. Like there's like 56 different Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. You, I was going to say, you, I, yeah, I, I, like, I was oh, say a lot of my friends were, like recognize like I look different. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. think you looked Han. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, other Chinese, did you, you're Chinese, right? Did you know? Did you, did you look at him and say, like, oh, he looks Mongolian? Yeah, a little bit. Did you have that? Did you think he wasn't Han? You don't know? Where are you from? Oh, Chinese American. Okay. Um, okay, so listen. So here's, here's a thing, right? It doesn't mean, like, I like white people. It doesn't mean I don't like black and brown people. Bro, so you're, you're all right, man. All right. And it doesn't mean black and brown skin is ugly. It just means I like light or, or pale skin or fair skin. Can, tell, it's like in Korea. Do you agree with him that it's like the default setting in Korea? That it's just like, yeah, it's just a given. Or to what degree? Can you just talk about that a little bit? So like just based on my experience, I think like the majority of people like like brighter skin. Brighter like, skin. Mm -hmm. It's not just like a brighter skin. It's like lighter skin plus clear faces ah. without like wrinkles or like freckles. It's just like light skin and being clear. So it it is. Okay, so let's get this right, right? And tell me if this is true for the three in India and China as much as you can. Mind you, when, I, when people come up here to the front and they are speaking about their lives and their countries and their people, you, you become the spokesperson for, dude, the two of you are the spokesperson for, you know, what, 1.2 billion people? Well, how, how many does India have now? 1.5 billion? That's a lot. Right. China, 1.3 billion. I mean, it's a lot of people. Right. So you're the spokespeople. The collectively, the three of you are talking for almost three billion people. I'm not expecting that. It's really what we're asking you for is like, OK, what do you see? So is it also true what Leah just said about clearness and like. It's not just lightness. It's all, there's more to it than that. Do you could you add in add something onto that? Um, I mean, I guess. But like, I mean, no one really wants like not clear skin so i feel like that's just i mean i don't think anyone really like wants that it's more like lighter skin in india i'd say yeah i think but korea's korea's its own unique world and the and the world of skin and beauty man bro do you could you add to that or not um i say that um she said like people like brighter skin i think it's like 100 percent accurate um like people like brighter and pale well not in well as speaking in terms of the uh beauty standard in china but maybe that does not apply in america yeah so yeah, yeah for sure. but but uh for sure that people like clear skin like everybody like clear skin like clear like yeah like good hygiene stuff yeah 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 yeah, yeah. hey can you can you put yellow on the big screen and do a close-up of of my face compared to Leah's face. So I'm going to put our faces together. All right. 
Not yellow. Wait, hang on. Not yellow. I meant green. Hang on. No, no, no. Not yellow. Green. Do green. Yeah, my bad. Uh, <laughs> all right, man. So here. You know, so I, I have a lot of conversations with Koreans and, and men, people my age. And I look at my, now my face looks, it's a little bright. I don't know. I wish I could. The, the lights are a little bright, but like, but you can, okay, you guys can see better. You know, I have these marks on my face, right? Look at this mark here. Like these, this is like, these are like, oh man, like this is not clear, bright skin. And I'll be in conversation with Korean men in particular, like you say my age, or maybe we're video conferencing, or there's a couple of us who are speaking uh, at something, maybe a conference or who knows what it is. And I'm looking at their faces who these Korean men who have really taken care of their faces and Korean men probably use, isn't it? I think Korean men use more beauty products than men anywhere in the world, right? Korean men probably, I'm going to go out on a limb. Yo, Koreans, don't hold me to this, but, I, but I, I'm going to go out on a limb because I think I read it somewhere. Like Korean men use more be like facial beauty products. I don't mean just, you know, like I, I like uh, cosmetics, like, like, you know, like uh, K-pop bands and so on. I mean, like foundation and stuff like that. Then like all men in the world combined. But I, that's probably not true. But I, it's something that came. But, but really more than anybody else in the world. And so you're taking care of skin. And, and it's that bright, it's brightness that, can you just say more about that? Like the, I don't know. I just want to see if we can go further on it. Um, so it's basically about like getting like lighter and like bright skin plus just having like just to put on like great like expressions on someone it's just better to have like clear and brighter skin do you, so do you know do you know men or boys who wear makeup like wear foundation and stuff yeah like just that? a few it's not the majority yeah but like if if like he's interested in like makeup products or like just if they're like interested in their appearance if they're into it they do use those kind of products but it's but it's the it's the foundation stuff right it's to give the clarity mm -hmm. and the yeah but it's just for just for a few people uh-huh uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah so, but there are some yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah but men around the world are not using mm -hmm. products uh, like mm -hmm. they're just not using products so here is a something you know in 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 korea so we will have a, this idea that in korea this is uh you know people have the idea that you all are comparing yourself or you've built your beauty standards because of the west because of europeans and and this is not not the case it's not because of europeans right this is this eurocentric vision of the world that europeans like we pushed ourselves out around the world. We've created all this media and everybody else wants to be like us. And so, you know, in Korea, as an example, um, you know, here is uh, the, 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 and from like the fifth century, Guguryeo? Guguryeo kingdom. Guguryeo. Mm -hmm. And the, in like the fifth century, look at these faces, these pale, these are nobles. In Korea, it's a very, and same with, with China and same with India. These are very agrarian societies. And so in, in all three societies, there's this desire to demonstrate your noblesse, your, your wealth, your power, your status. The best possible way to express it is by showing that you don't have to be in the sun. And so this is a fifth century uh, mural on a tomb. And look at those white faces. I mean, it's so distinctly there. And the, do, you know, do you know those words? Do you, know, do you know that one? Do you know what it means? It's like, it's like uh, people with colored eyes. And this is like a uh, rust, rust face or face of rust, like red. In the earliest discussions are, are of Europeans entering Korea, this is what they called Europeans. Like people of, of color, with colored eyes and rust faces, not white people. They didn't call them white people. They called them red people red faces. So it's like none of this came, and same with China, and India it's a little different because of the British, right? But none of this came from white people. This is all emerging from a society from within. 
And I think what makes this a really interesting conversation is because we stepped out of this Eurocentric understanding of things, you know. Hey, so can you guys, can you guys, uh, oh, by the way, do you know, bro, do you know who this woman is? Um, do you know her story? Not, not really, not really. Yeah? So she's a model and she's, you know, has these freckles. She's also a photographer. And so she put herself out there without covering up her freckles. She did this photo montage just showing her this, the, you know, just who she is in the natural. And people, re it really caused a stir. And, and for lots of people online and saying that's an insult to China, like to show her face like that as a model with the freckles, right? It's like, and we're in, in what happened, this, it was a, a campaign for Zada. And it's like, this is the West imposing its view of beauty on us. Like we have our own beauty, which you all have just talked about, the beauty standard, which is pale and bright and clear. And she's neither pale nor bright nor clear. And so this is an idea that this West is imposing a beauty standard on this person, on, on the people of China, which is like, damn, man. So you, you didn't hear about that dust up at all? Um, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Good for you, man. Okay. Can we talk about skin whitening cream, by the way? I have some. I got this in India, by the way. I got it in Mumbai. This is, can we, yo, can you zero in on that? I want to show you. Let's see if we can do it. Can you read it? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, we lost it. Dude, we, it, you got yellow? All right. Dude, it's, it's a uh, white perfect. Check out that. White perfect. Because when I think about white people, I think perfection. But it's white, it's perfect white skin, you know, or he, you know, here's a couple, a couple more of, here's perfect white, here's, uh, this is white radiance, this one was in Korea, you know, here's more white perfect, um, white power, right, so the idea is like you empower yourself, so can you talk about skin lightening cream, like what's, well, I mean, I know a lot of people who use it back home, but I haven't really, like, that's not really my vibe. Where do um, they use it? Like, how, how do they use it? Can you say? Well, I know some people who use it, like, all over their body, but mostly just, mostly just face. Just their face? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, they wouldn't use it on their hands also? So. Sometimes, but, like, majority, like, face. How often? Is it every day? Is it? Well, sometimes, like, if you get, like, a serum, then it just, like, actually lightens your skin, so you use it, like, twice a day, once a day, or, like, you can just get, like, a lightening foundation, which you use before you put your makeup on or something like that. So the, so the, the goal, though, really is to keep your skin as, as yeah. light or bright as possible. Mm -hmm. and, and, bro, do men use it? I've seen guys do it as well. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I was in a boarding school, so, like, some of my friends had, like, a few. Uh, it was different. It was, like, uh, I was there, like, two kinds of things uh, one one would be like fair and lovely that was for fair girls and lovely yeah and and, and the, for guys it was like fair and handsome fair and handsome uh, yeah that's for the guys and like some of the guys used to have it like if they're going out on a date or something they just put some on and go if they were going out with somebody they would put it on but it doesn't work immediately right like it's got i uh, know it does it does yeah. yeah it does yeah it can like if you get the thing that you put on like right before makeup like it'll just like brighten it up like seriously mm -hmm. yeah it's weird yeah and and Leah, like, it's just ever present in Korea, am I right? Like, skin whitening cream? Yeah. I don't think, like, like people reach out for, like, whitening products. But it's more like most of the products, they contain, like, whitening powder or just some ingredients that make your skin lighter and brighter. Mm -hmm. So is there a sense that white, so there's a beauty preference, but is there a sense that having white skin or bright skin or light skin will actually give you benefits economically and so on. You're more likely to get a job or you're more likely to move ahead or mm -hmm. is there a sense of that? 
or can we talk can we talk about that mm-hmm. what, like what's the conversation that lighter skin will bring you positive rewards mm-hmm. I don't think it's like an economic benefits in the future, but it's more like if you have like brighter skin, you you get a lot of compliments about your skins while your like skin is so bright. You have like really clear face. That's kind of a compliment. So like many people have just preference over clear and white skins. And like when it comes to like boys and girls relationships, guys have like majority of guys, they have preference over white skin girls. Mm-hmm. So that would be a reward. And would that mean, like, if you came to the United States mm-hmm. here, would they, people would be more interested in people who are white? Like, like boys, men would be more interested in, uh, men and women both mm-hmm. interested, looking for lighter skin partners? Mm-hmm. Like if you were d- date, looking to date an American. Dude, I'm going to try, I'll try to get you a date with someone who's Asian though, right? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to want to date a black dude at some point, you know what I mean? So, doesn't mean you're out of the picture, but would, when, is that, would that come into play here with Americans, or does, is it not the same? I don't think it's the same, but, like, I've seen, like, many, not many, just few Koreans who have, like, just preference over, like, white Americans. Uh Uh-huh. When compared to, like, other nationalities, just... I wouldn't like generalize it, but I've seen few. So what about me though? Nobody ever, and then I want to ask you about China on this question, right? Nobody ever says to anything to me about my skin mm-hmm. when I'm in Korea. Mm-hmm. Are, what are they thinking when they look at my skin? Mm-hmm. Are they thinking that uh, this guy, yeah, what are they thinking? Just like personally, I believe like Koreans, they have like standards on Koreans yeah. and they have like different standards on foreigners. Okay. So like even if you have like freckles or like if you have like dark skin, so you don't really care. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But if you're like Korean, if, if you're like very close friends, they would like say something about your face okay. besides just the skin color. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I never, I clearly, I never get compliments. Mm-hmm. You, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, it's a whole different world here. Bro, how, so how about... Yeah, could you, can you... What so, like, what, what what people think when you, like, walking down the street in China? Yeah. So, the way I see it is probably, like, people think that, uh, like, people think you would probably, like, they per- perceive you as, like, American, but instead, like, like they like they don't say, like, oh, there's a white guy walking down the street. They say, like, oh, there's an American walking down the street, where it's, like, they see you as, like, Caucasian uh, because you got a feature and the skin. Like, your skin is part of your feature, like, biological feature that, you, you know, like, yeah, building your appearances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Nah, like they don't see like oh there's a white guy because like it's it's different and uh-huh. like they see it as okay there's like American or there's like a foreigner walking on the street that there's not not a lot of consideration in terms of like your race it's 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 different it's a completely different concept than what we have in America uh, if from China yeah okay so like this dude right here no nobody would they it just they wouldn't they're not even looking at his skin's irrelevant it if yeah with him well they they'll, they'll notice it but like they're not gonna consider like like your race they're just say like oh you're a foreigner walking on the street Got instead you. of like something else so, so it may be that he and i would be categorized the same because we're both foreigners yeah yeah i'll say because as like i think there's like because the information like it's i think the spread is of information like because we got internet stuff so it's the China, what the, what people think of China right now is completely different from like 20 years ago, yeah. and they know that you know in America there's uh, white people and black people. So like when you, both of you walk in the street, they probably perceive you as like American got you. instead of like you know a white guy, black guy. Just, yeah, yeah. No, I mean this is true for and you know in West Africa, right? Like if you're you know if you are black American, and you you know are in, are in West Africa, you know like. Uh, Ghana or different different places you'll oftentimes just be considered American or just called white because it's just like it's like the, we just different categories you know white is American is white so if you're American you're just white in Haiti so you know when I I was in Haiti I took we took some students to Haiti and we had a couple students who were black Americans and people just called us they were all the blancs they're just the whites and and these students that we were with who were 
dude, they were dar- darker than you, like you, bro. They were darker than you, bro. They, and but P, the Haitians were calling them white people because they were Americans. So it's just like, yeah, I know, you're, you're black, but it doesn't matter. You're American, so you're white. It's just, this, and what I'm trying to do here is just kind of push out all these different kinds of standards and ways of people see these things, which is race, the way we think about race is not the way the entire world thinks about race. It's just very different and very complicated. Does anybody have any, anybody have, who has a question that they would ask or, or a comment that they, that they would want to make? Who wants, who would want, who wants, who has a question you want to ask? Come on, someone's got to have a question. Nobody's got a question? Dude. All right. Hang on, we'll go to, we'll go to you first, man. It's on, yeah. Why did none of you talk about the media and how the media portrays white people? Or like, you know. Yeah, we just didn't get there. Do you want to say something about the media? Because I feel like that has the most effect on how we see people. You well, see shows, movies, and all that. It does you know. now, but the kind of stuff that we're talking about goes, goes back be- beyond media. You know what I mean? Like in Korea, this is going back, you know, 1,500 years, right? So it's not about... We, what happens is we have the idea that, that, you know, the West imposes a media presence around the world and we follow. But so many of these preferences and ideas and perspectives that's way before the media but maybe you want to just say something about that um that's definitely true i mean if you look at an average guy like uh he goes home from work like sits from the sits in front of the tv and like turns on the news and then you see the like you see a woman on the like who's like telling the news full of makeup like as white as possibly you can get her to be um and basically, like every news report, like in terms, in terms of just news, lol, that's probably like everywhere. So, if like if you are on TV, like you want to look as yeah. fair as possible, and even like in the like movies and uh, TV shows, um, you, all of the good actors are like more like lighter skinned. Yeah, and like all the Bollywood actors, yeah. the top Bollywood actors, and are yeah, are lighter skinned. And like all of the, uh, like if if you're like dark skinned, m- you're more like there's more. I have, I mean, like, there are, but, like, in proportionality, there are, like, more number of, like, yeah. fair, fair skin, like, actors out there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, final, final question, bro, and then we'll go to the quiz. Yeah, I just had a question about, so, normally white people, in America at least, they're like, okay, I got to work on my tan. I got to be a little bit darker. And so, it just brought up the question for me, at least, like, what is your experience with coming to the States? And do you have friends who are like, oh, I need to work on my tan? And is that shocking to you? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, bro, like, if you go back to my country, like, they'll be following you, bro. <laughs> like, you, you'd be like, why would you work on your tan? Why? Like, I mean, that was my, uh, the, f- the first thing that I said, but um, let's be like, in in all fairness, it was just it was a week after I landed here, so yeah. You know, in, in Seoul, um, I, I, the number of people that had just full body masks, who are you know, especially my age, full body masks, hats, body masks, so no sun even gets on their face at all. You know, like damn. Leah, do you have a quick thing on that? Um, and then we'll, this is a great question. Thanks, man. Yeah, we do like put on like sunscreen not to just get buried in tan. So like just answering your question when I first came to America, like I was not really surprised because when I was even back in Korea, I knew a lot of Americans loved being tanned. And I do believe the reason between Koreans become wanting to become more lighter and Americans be wanting to being tanned is just because just based on their like history and yeah. their just preference. So like just sharing one of my experiences, I have a Korean American friend and when she like visited her family in Korea, she shared her story when she just went to see the her dermatologist. She said she just got there just to like get some like regular checkups on her skin and the receptionist like she recommended her to have like lightning services there 
even and she was mm -hmm. and her reaction was like she thought like her skin is just not tan as much so she was uh, she's uh, she was like oh i need to like get my skin tanned more and she heard that oh you should like get the lightning service yeah which is wild right yeah hey listen hey wait can we have a plus yeah oh no I mean, you guys have your phones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we'll we'll keep we'll keep this on for a hot minute. Dude, thanks, man. <laughs>